Two Stuart 5A steam engines in the workshop, part three. Removing the steam chest cover to take a closer look at the slide valve to see what happens as I rotate the crankshaft. This slide valve was not one of the parts that I made. The engine is running quite well, particularly at higher speeds, but at this speed the engine isn't quite so even. I'd like to mention that with vertical steam engines of this size, gravity plays a part. The main reciprocating parts, from the piston to the big end, are affected by gravity, so they move a little bit faster in a downwards direction than they do in the upwards direction. It seems quite logical, but I would like to have a look inside the steam chest to just verify that nothing has moved since I assembled this engine. This is a plastic food container and I have lots of these which I'm going to take up to the main workshop. I'm going to start using them for storing the parts that are take off engines that I'm working on and the fact that they have lids is a bonus. It's time to remove the steam chest cover. First of all I'll loosen every one of the nuts using a spanner then I use a socket to remove them. I machined the outside diameter of this socket just to make it smaller so now it fits into much tighter spaces. Thanks to the video running at a high speed, in no time at all, the nuts were all in the plastic box. The next part to dismantle is the reversing arm linkage, and all these parts go in the box as well. Once I've removed the steam chest to check the timing, I will have to put this part back in position so I can hold the reversing lever in the correct place. Thankfully, the steam chest cover came away from the steam chest itself very easily. This was the point that I refitted the reversing arm lock. This slide valve never did look right, but its adjustment is not too bad. The ports though are not perfectly square. I could do something about this, but I don't think the engine runs that badly that I need to start cannibalising it. Overall, the external part of the slide valve is just a tiny bit too long. This particular series is just about comparing two Stuart 5A steam engines. I've made lots of videos about timing steam engines and normally, where possible, I will use a 5A because it's physically big and you can see what's going on. Have a look around the contents of my channel if you want more information on how to time a steam engine. There are quite a few videos covering this. With the help of some extra lighting you can clearly see what's going on here. With this eccentric setting the timing is not right. The slide valve is moving too far in the downwards direction. You really only need to see the port uncovered. When all the adjustments are correct, the slide valve should uncover the ports at the same amount at each end. This can be corrected just by altering the position of the eccentric, but then you may find that the slide valve is opening the bottom port too much. It's quite a balancing act really, but it's most important that all of the parts that you're using are as per drawing assuming that the drawing is correct. In the next episode I'll be looking at the slide valve and the valve timing on the other engine just to show, if any, what the differences are. In these clips it's really good to see that there's no scoring of the port face. The slide valve and cylinder lubrication is more than adequate. I've changed the position of the camera and once again you can clearly see the operation of the slide valve. I don't see this very often, but the ports are not in the right place. Possibly when the steam chest was machined, it wasn't held correctly. This engine runs exceedingly well, so I'm not going to start grinding the ports and make the ports look nice at the expense of the engine's performance. At the end of this video, I show this engine running at a high speed with 80 pounds per square inch of compressed air being fed to it. In the previous video, I showed this engine in steam in the garden. I was using a 5 inch diameter gas fired boiler which was far too small for this engine. After refitting the steam chest cover I ran the engine on the bench to see what it was like. I turned the pressure up to about 50 pounds per square inch for this demonstration. And as you can clearly see, it runs very well in both directions, and it's quite even. But, me being me, I need to have a bit of a tweak. 
because it's easier to do it by ear, for me anyway, than it is by eye. After a bit of a tweak though, it really is running well now. I think it's time for a cup of coffee in one of the mugs that my daughter had made. It seems to be running quite well now. I've only ever had one Stuart 5A that was completely silent and that was because it was so well made everything was just off being tight. And that engine would not run on low pressure air. It ran slowly but needed more air than this one. As I previously mentioned, because the valve timing is slightly retarded, it is prone to making a clunking noise. But really, for its intended application as a general purpose engine as part of my collection, then I don't need to mess about making sure the timing has early admission, etc. I want it to run slowly. I'm quite happy with this performance, and I'd just like to say, before I turn the pressure up, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.